Thank you. So what I'd like to do is kind of turn to neuroscience, although neuroscience, um, or I guess the, the aging brain initially mm -hmm. uh, would be really good to talk about. Um, so you talked about cognitive ability declining um, as we get older. And in fact, from our 20s, <laughs> early 20s, which is a bit frightening. Can you, can you talk about, so in what way, uh, like which components of it? And, and do we have any idea what's happening at the kind of the molecular level? I mean, why is the brain slower? Mm. Yeah, good question. You know, it's a disturbing topic. It's something, you know, we, we don't like to think about, but it's sort of all around us. And, you know, we can see it every day when you, you know, you have that tip of the tongue or you can't remember, you know, your friend from college's name or something like that. Um, I think, so, so your first question, what, which parts of cognition are declining? Yeah. Based on sort of the meta studies that have been done, it, unfortunately, almost all cognitive capabilities and, and faculties decline with age, start, some of them starting mid, late 20s, except basically for um, things like vocabulary. So mm. I, think it's, I think the term is world knowledge, things that are sort of factual um, pieces of information that you've learned over your life, right? So you can imagine as you get older, your vocab and your knowledge of geography and things like that increases, um, but all other faculties mostly decline in terms of processing speed, learning speed, memory, um, sort of executive function. All, most of these things all decline, uh, in, which is pretty frightening. Um, I think for sure it varies, of course, person by person, um, but on average, uh, almost everything starts declining. It's pretty scary. Mm. Um, in terms of why that might be, um, short answer is, is we don't really know, unfortunately, right? And so I think part of that is we accept it as a natural course of aging. Um, and also, right, we, by our behavior, develop ways to compensate for it. And actually your brain does things to compensate for sort of the failing aspects as well. So, you know, you might find that as you get older, you, I know I have, <laughs> make more lists, right? To remember mm. what to do. You know, when you're younger, maybe you didn't need lists as much. Now you, you, you think, you know, I have a lot more to do at work or I have a much more complicated life. I have a family. I need lists to keep track of everything, right? It makes <laughs> sense. But in, in a way, that those kinds of behaviors are compensating perhaps for, you know, a slightly worse memory than you had 10 years ago, right? So I think by our behavior and, you know, especially with all the technology we have available to us now with reminders and calendars and everything, right? We can overcome a lot of these issues so it's not so noticeable. Um, but I think, unfortunately, right, this is on, if you really do side-by-side -side tests, right, and when clinicians do these studies and um, have people take the exact same tests in the exact same ways, et cetera, the, the actual um, very average decline, it becomes very apparent. Um, but in terms of why that might be, so we don't really know, but there are definitely physical changes in the brain that have been found to be associated with aging and likely to contribute to sort of these declining processes, right? So there's sort of a decrease in gray matter over time with age. There's physical change, some, some reports of loss of neurons, but a lot of reports of changes in the actual neurons themselves over time, right? So the structure and how connected they are to other neurons decreases in the activity of specific cells and specific brain regions, and also their connectivity to each other changes over time as well. Um, and so in aging and in diseases like Alzheimer's and things like that. So there's these physical changes in the brain that make sense and are likely to be responsible for these sort of declining cognitive abilities. Um, but why exactly those physical changes happen, right? We don't really know. And now there's been work, right? And you find specific cellular or molecular mechanisms that might be contributing to them, right? Reactive oxygen species, DNA damage, the traditional kind of things that we think about with aging. And so those definitely could be contributing, you know, to this, to this changing structure of the brain. Um, but again, you can always keep going back. Why does that happen to begin with, right? We don't really know. Um, you know, recently there's been a lot of exciting work done on sort of the support cells in the brain, the glial cells, um, microglia, and sort of inflammation and the role that they play in sort of maintaining a healthy brain and the neurons and their structures and connections. And so I think that's a, a very active um, area of research and you know, a lot of promising results so far. But again, to summarize, we don't really know why overall any of this is happening, right? Um, 
It's right. unfortunate, but we're working on it, you know? Okay. Have, no, that, have... Yeah, that's good. Um, so do you have any suggestions uh, for, so if, if I want to keep my brain better, um, is there any particular suggestions as to, yeah, how, how to, how to maintain a, a healthy brain? I, I guess in terms of uh, like diet um, mm -hmm. or exercise. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, I know there's in the media and I have friends or family occasionally asking me about these supplements and things and people come out of these fasting regimes and stuff like that. Um, you know, a couple of papers come out and gets in the media and people are excited. Mm -hmm. I think there are definitely um, there. Some of these new things are, are promising in at some point maybe be pinned down enough that we know exactly what to do and what the benefits are and what potential side effects. But for me, actually, I think, you know, the, the, the things that I myself do and recommend to other people are the safest and sort of most traditional things you can imagine. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So I think exercise is mm -hmm. something that's been, pro, you know, broadly and profoundly found to have anti-aging effects across species, across tissues, you know, in, in, it's like the best thing you can do for yourself is to exercise and be healthy, you know, specifically aerobic exercise, sort of, um, you know, somewhat strenuous ro aerobic exercise, swimming, running. So that's something I try to do and recommend people recommend for people to do. Um, I think of course, you know, using your brain, you know, the idea of use or lose it. I think mm -hmm. that actually carries some weight. You know, I think it makes sense again, from sort of an evolutionary standpoint, but also sort of in, in, in a neuroscience standpoint that using your brain and being stimulated helps it become or stay rather younger and healthier than if, you know, you don't do much and sort of static all day. So you can, you know, I like to think about, you know, in the old days when humans or pre-humans were living in tribes, right? If you're an old elder and you're wise and you have a lot of experience and you're helping solve these problems for your tribe, right? Like, oh, there's an invading tribe coming or this animal is giving us problems or, you know, the farming's not working. If you're a wise elder and you're helping actively think and solve problems, you're, you're, you're giving value to your tribe and helping them survive, helping your kids and your grandkids to survive, right? So that intrinsically is giving value um, to, your, to your existence and, and to your genetic pool. Um, but if you're just sitting, you know, in your hut or your tent by yourself all day, you know, doing nothing, um, and you get bored and you're not stimulating your brain, you're not being active, you can imagine that, you know, it's not so necessary. That elder is not so necessary for the tribe and the brain isn't, you know, being exercised just like your muscles, just like doing weightlifting, you know, it's not being used and utilized. Um, and so it can sort of go stagnant. So I think doing things to stimulate your brain sort of in, mm. with animal models and things we call, um, you know, environmental enrichment, right? So that's like, if you give a mouse a wheel or a toy, or you give it extra new types of food and things like that, you know, it's been shown to have these beneficial effects um, on sort of learning and memory and brain aging. And so I think for humans, it's the same idea, right? You travel, you go to new places, you learn a new game, um, you know, you meet new people. These things I think really do help people sort of stay and feel younger and keep your brain healthier. Um, and of course, you know, a good diet, you know, eating healthy as you can always, you know, has, has, has great benefits. And I think, um, you know, in a lot of different things, a lot of different tissues, a lot of different diseases, you know, of course it's beneficial. Um, the last thing I say is sleep, good quality mm -hmm. sleep. So actually there's been a good amount of work showing a, a pretty strong link between sleep and sort of brain health and learning and memory and aging. Right. And so, and actually as we age, generally people have worse quality sleep and less sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, but sleep is very important for your brain's health, um, and keeping it nice and clean and healthy. And also for sort of the memory and learning and memory processes. And as they sort of move around your brain and become stored. And so I think having a lot of good quality sleep as much as you can manage is also, um, one of the best things you can do if we're trying to, you know, stay, keep our brains young and healthy as long as we can until we have, you know, that magic pill that, that can solve all our problems. So we don't have to exercise and don't have to sleep, but. <laughs> Until then, yeah. Um, right. So just one kind of detail on it. So in terms of exercising the brain, mm -hmm. uh, so there's games like Jewel and uh, – so there's learning new things like languages or instruments. But, but there are games specifically like Jewel and Back. Do you know Jewel and Back? Jewel. So I, did, I, didn't, I didn't know it specifically, 
Um, but I know of it generally. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wondered, do you see any, is that a good way of exercising the brain? The, these kind of brain training games? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, you know, there's, it, I think there's been more work on this and it's, I think it's exciting. It's very powerful, especially with technology these days, right? You can give everyone an iPad and have them, you know, play these games or what have you. But I think absolutely there's a value and, you know, it, it can't hurt, right? So mm -hmm. there's been varying reports on these types of studies um, where if you take some elderly people and you have them train on some some sort of some type of video game, you know, learning memory exercises, um, does that improve various aspects of their cognition and learning and memory, right? But the some people, some scientists claim that it, it trains them to be better at that specific game, right? Mm. But not general life responsibilities and tasks. So, you know, if you, if you learn to remember the sequence order of colors or numbers or something, they may get better with that game with more training, but that might not help them remember what they need to buy for groceries or, you know, how to drive down the street to get to this grocery store. Other people... Other studies, and actually for this dual and back, you know, they have found that certain types of games and training do indeed have effects on other aspects outside of the game, right? And a lot of these games now, from what I know, are gearing and sort of designed to be geared towards more life everyday kind of tasks that are more, are more applicable and may be more helpful for those everyday kinds of things, right? And so you can imagine those would be even more important and helpful for those people. Um, so I think, I think there's, it doesn't hurt, right. Mm. To do whatever you can to help your brain. Um, and, you know, having a better memory, even in that game, isn't a bad thing. And I think absolutely some of them have this ability and potential to be broader and more applicable to sort of cognitive functions, executive functions, things that you need in your everyday life. You know, I, you know, I can say for sure, my grandmother, we try to get her to, you know, play as many games on her iPad as she will. My grandfather used to do a Sudoku, multiple mm -hmm. Sudokus every day, you know, and I can't, I can't tell you clinically that it had an effect, but to me, I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, it's a healthy thing to do. It keeps your brain active. Um, but again, I think more so than just those specific games is sort of the environmental enrichment, right? T seeing, talking, interacting with people, new people. I think that really helps. People are much healthier when they're interacting with other people and they're doing new things. Um, and so I think those things, besides the games themselves, are also important. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.